State Basketball is brought to you by Cash Valley Bank. We are Cash Valley Bank. Automatic car credit where your car buying experience is automatic. Four Seasons Event Center and luxury apartment homes. Selleck Express from your door to the Selleck City Airport 12 times a day. GNC, live well. And by Cash Valley Oxygen, serving Cash Valley for over 35 years. Senior night, not just for Keyshawn Ray, but also for Big Blue, and they reveal him here on Senior Night. Yeah, trying to, the kid's dream is to find out who's the guy behind the mask. And I remember as a young kid going to sporting events, when they had Senior Night for the mascot, it was always exciting to see who it was. So. Good for him. You mentioned, they mentioned over the PA, he's been Big Blue for four years. Ooh. Utah State 13 and one on senior night under coach Stu Morrill. The win tonight would also be the program's 1500. There's only 51 programs that have been able to do that. If you look at, there's what, over 340 Division I college basketball programs. So that would be quite an accomplishment. They'd be the 52nd team to do so if they can beat UTSA here tonight. You wonder if the Aggies are going to try and get in that paint. That's a stat that they always dominate in is points in the paint. And right now UTSA has got 10 to Utah State 6. So UTSA is playing really well down on the low blocks. we got some physical players that are doing a great job for them. Talk about Utah State's great rebounding margin advantage. Well, they did lose the rebounding advantage last time out to San Antonio. They lost it by one. And loose ball situation. Marvin Jean trying to save it. Crosses the uh, end line. It'll be UTSA basketball. Well, started on the break. Not a great pass coming from Jean. He's trying to get the ball to, to Butterfield. The Butterfield's quick. That ball was behind him, and Butterfield never had a clear grasp on the ball to get to the hoop. So Jean kind of threw a lazy bounce pass to, instead of leading it. It was behind him. So maybe go visit Chucky Keaton and take a book out of the quarterback's pay, or a page out of the quarterback's book. UTSA just 2 and 17 when they trail at halftime. And they mount a comeback here in Logan. A nice look inside. A whistle and a foul. They're going to get Clifford. It's going to be three on Clifford because he had that charge to end the, end the first half. Got his money's worth there with the strip and then the block. It was Burridge getting in the lane, creating havoc. So one thing that the Aggies have been able to do is not let Burridge go off. They did the same thing against Texas State in their leading score. Jordan Sims at the line, the junior out of Tucson, Arizona, had a season-high 20 points in that first meeting with Utah State. Six of eight shooting from three-point range. Also had five assists and three steals. Way shy on that one. Davis, back to Butterfield, yet to miss from the floor. How about Butterfield with only three rebounds? That should come out that big performance. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Utah State. Oh, it would have been really difficult to duplicate that. It just, wow. just one of those shaking your head type performances. I, Brooks, you know, we've done a lot of basketball games the last four years inside the spectrum. That's one of the best single game performances I think I've seen. With yeah, Utah by State. far. I mean, when you can go out and get 20 rebounds and 10 points, and the thing that's most impressive is he's not one of those athletes that can jump out of the gym to get those rebounds. He's got to work for every one of them, and he's going to be undersized on about anybody he guards. He's only 6'2", and he's going up against 6'3", to 6'6", guys. As he missed his uh, first shot of the game, Sims also missing that one, but yeah, Butterfield, he's, he's self-made. He does it by work ethic. I mean, he maximizes that talent. Whenever I come up here after practice, and a handful of times, he's still shooting until about half hour afterwards. But when the women come in, and it's their time to use the gym, they have to kick him out. He's just a gym rat, and he's worked hard to be where he's at right now. And it's one of the key cogs for Utah State moving forward. 25-18. Utah State yet to score here in the second half. Burridge pulls up and hits it. Wanted a foul. Thought he was hit on the elbow. Now that's the first open look we've seen him take where he's, other than a couple tip-ins, I mean, that's the first time that he's created space for himself to get an open look, and that's where he scores his points. He creates, he's kind of a slasher, off-the-dribble type guy. 
Courage a team high seven points. Gene shot a pass to Clifford. Chance for a three-point play for Ben Clifford. Michael, every time Utah State has worked offensively against this zone that UTSA is bringing at them, and they've scored, the ball's gone right there to the short corner, or the ball's gone to the high post. That's a tremendous job moving the ball around the zone, forcing the defenders to get out of position, and Clifford goes up and finishes. It's a great offensive set coming from the Aggies. Utah State as a team, they shoot 71%. Clifford able to knock down the free throw last game against Texas State. They shot 80% so far at 77 here for this game against UTSA. And Clifford 6 of 7 from the line. Three ball off the mark. Shaw with the rebound. Quickly to Davis. Clifford on the break. Clifford's going to finish. Oh, how about the game Ben Clifford is having? 16 for the sophomore. The ball never had to touch the floor. I mean, they got out and ran the break, and it started with Jared Shaw's defensive position on the rebound. He cleared out his guy, got the rebound, and then gets the starts the break. Oh, nice look inside as Jordan Sims able to finish. Great job by Sims, able to finish around the shot blocking uh, Shaw. Good pass coming from the Roadrunners, beating Utah State offensively. Yeah, that was a nice feed as Sims, 64% free throw shooter. Misses, Roland comes in with a rebound. Eight point Aggie advantage. Second half, 16, 20 on a running clock. Davis finds Shaw. Your, your pet peeves, Brooks, can you kind of brought it low? It was ingested. a hard pass to grab. I thought Davis did a great job penetrating the zone. A little too much mustard on that pass. But uh, you mentioned that ball's low. He's got to be able to catch that clean and go up and finish. Just catch it in stride, about chin level. I mean, he's so big. Davis had a solid performance, but did have seven turnovers on Thursday against Texas State. Bridge unable to connect. Some contact there with Davis. Aggies with possession. There's Shaw. Beautiful move by Jared Shaw. He can be unstoppable. He's got a series of moves. He has some range to the outside. He's taking you over his left side, spins back right, and finishes so easy, especially when the guy guarding him is only 6'4". Big time mismatch. Dunk by Jeremy Hill, the forward from Australia. He's the team and. Defensive rebounds and total rebounds and rebounding average. He's part of that big three. He averages 12 points a game. Speaking of Jeremy Hill, only two points tonight. That's his first bucket. Coming off that 15-point performance against Seattle is Clifford. 18 points. Ben Clifford's going for a career high tonight. Boy, is he playing fantastic. His face-up game, Michael. If these post players play and get clicking, they're dangerous. They can shoot it, and they got great back-to-the-basket games. How about the game for Ben Clifford? 11-point Aggie advantage. By Ben Clifford, a career high here on senior night for the sophomore. 18 points. His previous career high He's was 14. Fantastic. Done twice, last time against La Tech. He's getting out, he's running the floor, he's he's making himself effective offensively, and when he does that, the Aggies are dangerous. Look at the work that he's put in so far in this contest. Look at everything, inside out. A little offensive put back, the little shot from the corner. The baseline jumper was falling for him. He's got to the foul line, and how about the block? He's doing it on the defensive end. Also on the break, too. We've not seen him finish in transition like he has tonight, but what a performance by Ben Clifford. Six rebounds. He might get a double-double tonight. Inside, 15 minutes to play. Chance here for a three-point play by Enrico McGregor. I like this McGregor guy. He's physical. He's strong. He's athletic. Able to avoid the shot blockers on that last play. And a maneuver around the shot blockers. And of Nassau, Bahamas. 34-26 Utah State. Here in the second half, 14. 47 left as Enrico McGregor at the line from Bahamas. The only other player I know from Bahamas is Michael Thompson, who's 
pretty good Minnesota Golden Gopher back in the day, number one overall pick of the Portland Trailblazers, leaving 78, but not really a hotbed for, for basketball. Tim Duncan somewhere down there in terms of where he's from, but McGregor at the line, converts on the three-point play. Well, they're just quietly sticking around. We've seen several teams come into the spectrum and do that and try and find a position to, for them to win. You think of Idaho, it took overtime. They just stuck around. Utah State had to fight like crazy to get to overtime against the Vandals. Edlin hit that three-pointer. It's Rowland. Hits a three-pointer. First made shot by Neil Rowland tonight. Great shot by Rowland. He was open. He's kind of taking the page out of Marvin Jean's book. There's been a lot of arch on his shot tonight. A nice pass inside. Able to finish. Jeremy Hill. Led the team in rebounding 13 times. Last four games, he's averaging 14 points. Twice Jeremy Hill's been going. And immediately, Coach Morrill's going right back to the bench and bringing Clifford and Stone, or excuse me, Clifford and Shaw back in because he feels like he's not getting it defensively out of Stone and, and Lopez. Roland again. Front iron, but gets the bounce at home. Back to back threes by Roland. Aggies leading by 11. Well, that will cure some defensive ailments. Just hit threes. Now, when shots are falling, it makes a coach's life easy. <laughs> it takes a lot of headache when you're making shots. Or takes away a lot of headache, excuse me. Inside again. Hale the third gets that carom and knocks down the three. Michael Hale the third at a federal way. Coming off that disappointing performance for him where he played 40 minutes, was one for 11 shooting with just three points, buries that three. Davis gets to Lopez. Matt Lopez is scored tonight. Now he scored it Thursday against Texas State. He's playing much more confident when he gets the minutes. See if he can do something defensively. That's what they need to get out of him, a solid effort on both sides of the court, both defensively and offensively. Mid-year transfer from LaSalle. Had that terrific debut against Utah Valley. Been kind of so-so since as Burge wanted a foul. Utah State running. Rolling again. Stone offensive rebound. Second chance here for the Aggies. He checked that time by Roland. Yeah, Roland wanted it. How about Stone running the floor? You got 6'11", 7-footers running the floor and getting rebounds. Lopez again in the paint. Two in a row for Lopez. The sophomore from New Jersey. 6'11", 245. Good to see this kind of production coming from Matt Lopez. Well, this time he went with the left hand, Michael. A nice deep position. They're switching on screens, an immediate mismatch, and it was a good find coming from Butterfield. Get the ball to the big fella and let him go score it. 12-point advantage for Utah State. And how about our four seasons event center sub of the game, Roland. Boy, he put a nice little run together, and it could have been to him or Lopez, but I'll tell you what, Roland, well-deserving. This one here, he's able to grab the front of the iron and squeak it over. I mean, he's playing really well, Tanil Roland, and he's got to. When he plays well, the Aggies seem to click and play a lot better as a team. Been playing much better as of late. Uh, four seasons sub of the game six points a couple made threes and a couple of heat check shots after those made threes there is brooks thompson one time member of the utah jazz really enjoyed his time at salt lake incidentally thought he found a home hail the third connects on another three he's got the craziest head fake when he goes but tries to throw you off with the head fake then the step back three and he's got tremendous leaping ability a nice shot coming from hell with her. He's the WAC player of the week back in November. Part of that 1,000 point, 500 rebound club of UTSA. 10 plus points the last, well, 11 of the last 12 games, I should say. 10 or more points. The one being Seattle. Shot clock down to two, Roland. Clifford offensive rebound. Swiped away. Shaw will pull the trigger and hits from about 18. Yes. 
Shaw now with eight. That was a good a little possession by Utah State. They're able to work the ball deep into the shot clock, get a couple good looks, some open looks, and then keep it alive on the offensive rebound, get another good look. Sean Clifford got tremendous touch for post players. Michael Hale again getting heated up here in Logan. Much better second half. He had five first half points. Now he's got a total of 13. Now you can tell he's getting going. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Nice little jump shot coming from Hale. Shaw back to Roland. Boy, he thought about pulling the trigger. Puts it on the floor, looking for help. Back to Davis. Shot clock inside 10. Davis turns it over. Hale the third. Butterfield back defensively. And Michael Hale the third. A chance at a three-point play. He has taken over here in the second half for UTSA. Now you take another look. He's going full speed. I didn't see where Butterfield touched him. I think they're going to count the basket on that one. Give him a little continuation. The Herd, not a big fan of that call either. So 10-13 left, 46-39. They've been on the road. They'll open the 2013 home schedule on Wednesday, March 20th, as they take on in-state foe Utah. Admission to USU softball games free for all fans. For more information, visit the softball page on utahstate.com. They're going to have to get some blow dryers or some snow blowers or something if they're going to want to play softball here by 20th of March. There's still six to eight inches of snow out there on the diamond. Last couple of days, though, have been brilliant here in the Cache Valley. Sun out, temperature heating up a little bit. I think it got to 45 today. Balmy. A balmy 45 is Michael Hale the third. Now with 16 points. Right at his average. That's part of the big three. You got to stop him if you want to stop UTSA. They haven't been able to do so, especially here in the second half. Shot clock inside, 10 seconds. Roland puts it on the floor. He'll have a chance at a three-point play. How about that? Great heads-up play. He was trying to get the ball into the post, and he noticed he couldn't get there at the pass, so he did the dribble and just broke down the, the zone defensively. Great job by Tanilda. See that lane open up and take advantage of it. Get in there and scoop that one just up over the rim and draw the foul on McGregor. Rollins now with nine points. Trying to join Clifford and Butterfield in double figures. Nine point ball game. Burridge, he's got seven tonight. They've been very quiet. They've done a good job on him defensively. As they did on Joel Wright on Thursday. He's the second leading scorer in the WAC. Hill missed on the jumper. Trying to go up double figures as we approach nine minutes in the second half. Gene. Leaves it for Clifford. Clifford, a chance for a three-point play. 20 points for Ben Clifford. Great job by Marvin Jean. Same thing that we saw Tanel Rowland do, penetrate the zone. This time he dished. A nice little pass, Clifford being patient, waiting for the shot blocker to get there and draw that foul. You know, as long as you draw that foul, you're in a good position. You at least get to the foul line. If you get the end one, that's a bonus. That's what happened with Ben Clifford. McGregor picks up his fourth personal foul. Clifford smashing his career high in, in points. Remember, it was 14. Now it's 21 on seven of eight shooting. Also seven of eight from the charity strike. Michael Hale again reigns in a three. He's got 19. And you know the student section was all over him at half, cheering for him to shoot some threes. And He's answered. What were they chanting? Was it ice cold? Is I that think they were chanting his name. Okay. But my goodness. Butterfield on a drive. Just lowers that shoulder. Three point shooting each team with five made threes. Butterfield at the line. That's what you call sheer willpower. 
I mean, absolute willpower. Just trying so to So determined on that drive. Got called for the offensive foul in the game against Idaho, which I thought was a critical junction in that game. Didn't matter because Midland knocked down the three to send it into overtime. But he is just such a determined player. If he wants to drive, he's going to drive. If he wants to make a shot, it seems like he can make shots. Just kind of wills things to happen. Talked about one of the top free throw shooters on this Utah State club as he goes out. Marcel Davis, the freshman, checks back in. Utah State by 11. So they bring Marcel back in, and he's guarding hell. And you see, he'll be all over hell the third. They can't allow him to get going. Hill. Nice drive, but shot enough to bottle that shot. Roland now bringing it up for the Aggies. Clifford got tangled up in the lane. Shaw. Any time on the clock. Hill lost the rebound to Marvin Jean. Rolling for three. Got it. Three main threes by Tanil Rowland. Now in double figures for Tanil. That's a big shot. And they kept the ball alive. You know, I thought UTSA was in great position to get that rebound defensively, but nobody went up and got it. Hill the third fouled on the drive. Will be at the line and shoot a pair. 7.29 left. Aggies leading UTSA 57-43 behind Ben Clifford's big night. Shootout between Ben Clifford with 21 and Michael Hill the third with 19. He's, he's at the free throw line right now. I'll tell you one thing that Coach Morrill is going to be proud of. Last time, or excuse me, Thursday night, Utah State had 19 assists to 19 turnovers. So they shared the ball, didn't take care of it. Tonight, they're 18 assists to 9 turnovers. So they're doing much better in that aspect as they Get ready to head into the conference tournament down in Vegas. Able to make good on the first free throw. Michael held the third. Federal Way, Washington. North Idaho College transfer. Coming off just a three-point performance in the last at home to Seattle. Where he was just one for 11. This, I would say, a bounce-back performance for the senior. You can tell he wants every bit of it. He wants the ball in his hands, and he's going to try and take his his defender off the dribble. And he comes up almost with a steal, making life difficult for Roland. And we'll get across half-court line. Coaching seven minutes in this second half. Gene back to Roland. Roland with 12 on four of nine shooting. Shot clock down to five. Butterfield pulls the trigger. Short. Burridge with the rebound. Knocked away by Butterfield. Hail the third right there. He'll pull up. He wants the ball. He wants to score. Deep three by Hail the third. He has scored the last 16 points for UTSA. Talking about putting a team on your back and trying to carry them. Yeah, and he's 150 pounds carrying this <laughs> that well. I mean. At 5'9", just a teeny guy out there, but boy, does he play with heart. Is he athletic? What an athlete. Missed that last three and then guilty of his foul against Marvin Jean. You know, he probably got a little too aggressive. You could see he wanted to shoot the ball. And sometimes when you're feeling it, you got to be careful with your shot selection. Uh, turn him loose. Let him go. See what he can do. 21 points. You know, Burridge 16 in a row. Yeah. Oh, it's just an amazing. You know, the other part of the big three, Burridge with just seven, and Hill's got six. So he's kind of picking up their slack. Approaching six minutes, rifle pass by Gene Roland. Baseline jumper is good by Roland. 14. A lot will do in a ball fake, and it'll get you in a lot of places to get open looks, and that ball fake, when you're knocking down threes, one little shot fake gets the defender in the air, and you step up to 15 feet and knock it down. Rolling out of Louisville, Kentucky. Whistle and a foul. I didn't see who they called that foul on. 
I think they give it in the area. I think they give it to Butterfield, and that's his third. Coach Morrill, six-time conference coach of the year. Uh, I think his name should be up there with what he's had to deal with in terms of the oh, injuries. Yeah. I, I don't think he's going to win it. Joe Scott, but he's losing. Michael White, yeah, but he's... he should be in the conversation with, with the job he's done with this team. Michael, as decimated as it, it's been. Michael White took a team that was not good last year and made him very good this year. Utah State with the block. Burge got it back and then misses. Yeah. Louisiana Tech ranked. They were ranked for the first time since 1985 since Carl Malone. Gene living up for shot. Blocked by Hill, but... Hill got him with the body, and Jeremy Hill but picks up the foul. You take a look at that play. That's what I'd love to see Jared Shaw do more of. A lot of times he catches and gathers and loses the ball right there. He caught and went fluidly right to the rim and wanted to dunk it. Right here, catch, straight to the rim. He didn't bend over, put the ball on his knees, put the ball on the floor, and that's where he can be so effective. Hill picks up his third foul. Shaw making good on the first free throw attempts. Leads the team with nine double-doubles. Thought he might have a chance to catch Keyshawn Reed in terms of the dunk totals. Needs to get busy if he's going to do that. He's got 13. Reed has 15. And he hasn't played since January 17. Keyshawn definitely a high flyer. He's in the, uh, would have been in the dunk competition. But they hold up the uh, final four. Inside five minutes to play. Utah State in control now, 61-45. So the Aggies go for offense on this trip. Gene. Shaw. Back to Roland. Gene open look at a three. Got one to go down. Marvin Gene. Now just one for seven tonight. Been able to knock down that three ball. You kind of get the feeling that one of those is going to fall. Jeremy Hill a chance for a three-point play. Seems like the Roadrunners are playing with much more aggression here in the second half. And just maybe a, not enough, a little too late in the ball game. But Jeremy Hill really strong on Shaw. Hard to believe that's Shaw's first foul tonight. Hill leading the team in rebounding with... Uh, Averaging six, as shot out, Lopez back in. Lopez got a nice ovation, four points for Matt, the sophomore from New Jersey. And Lopez comes up with that rebound. We approach four minutes here at the Spectrum on senior night. Maggie's 13 and one on senior night under coach Stu Morrill. Trying to get inside to Lopez. We'll stay with Utah State. Trying to send Keyshawn Reed out with a win here. Final home game. You know, offensively, Utah State keeps getting several mismatches on the post guys. You got Big Stone and Lopez, and, and they had Clifford several times with smaller guys on them. That's what they're trying to do. Credit to UTSA. They're not allowing them to get the ball into the paint that easy. It's tough. You're going to get in there. It's going to be hard. Gene, shot clock now down to four. Clifford forces the three, rims out. Lopez takes it away and scores inside. Matt Lopez. That was six on the back. How about that? It fell right into his lap. And that goes to show you when you get a rebound, keep it chin high. Whoever had that, that defensive rebound had the ball down low and Lope went right into Lopez's hands. This has been his best game since the Gosner. As Hill again able to draw without crafty at getting to the line. 324 left. Utah State in control. 66 47. Back inside the spectrum. Let's get to our Lewiston State Bank play of the game. How about Matt Lopez and what he's been able to do as coming off the bench. Just ripped that ball right out of Wilkins' hands. 
you know, that's where the size advantage. Wilkins only 6'4", and you got 6'11", Matt Lopez. Put that ball high. He'll able to knock down the first free throw. You know, this is, although this is the first time that UTSA has played Utah State in Logan, this is not their first trip. Back in 2003, they're part of the Gosner Foods Classic. But they did not play Utah State. They played New Mexico State in San Francisco. So it was a different format back in the day. More of a tournament style. It's not every team you know, played each other like they do now or they have the last several years where you get three games. So they, they've been to Logan before, but lost both contests. Oh, nice pass. Clifford to Lopez. Matt Lopez now. Eight points for the big fella. He's playing fantastic, Michael. One thing he did there so well is he didn't gather and go down low. He kept the ball high like we talked about with Shaw when he got fouled. He caught it in rhythm, in stride, and went up and laid it over the rim. I don't know if you can classify that as a dunk, but it was close. He could have flushed it home. A great down play. Softly. Well, it started breaking down this zone offensively by getting that ball to high post. And Clifford, you got to respect him and suck up on him for his shooting ability. And it opens up the zone so you can go give the dish to, to Lopez or the, the cutting guards, whoever moves to that open spot on the zone. Gene off the mark on that three. Burridge gets a tip. So Burridge, nine points. He had five in that first half. Lopez has tied his career high. He's set in his Aggie debut against Utah Valley. They we'll try to get him one more so he can have a career night just like Ben Clifford. Let's see. Inside two minutes to play. Texas State or see UTSA, they've headed to a man-to-man -man defense. So. Rejected. Wilkins with the block. A team that really doesn't get a whole lot of blocks. Hill misses the reverse, got it back. Missed again, but we'll get back to the free throw line. And how about our Larry Miller drive of the game? Well, how about Shaw? It's driving the body through the defender and doing a tremendous move over the left shoulder, switch back to the right, laid in nice and easy. I'd say that's a good drive. You put that shoulder in and drive it through the defender. Hill. Uh, this is again, he's had a tough night from the charity stride, two for four. Jeremy Hill, we're gonna take Lopez out. That was secretly rooting for Matt Lopez to get a new career high. I guess he does tie it. But uh, this is certainly his best performance. A nice ovation, and that's gonna be welcoming because I'll tell you what, if he's playing well, a little confidence going into this WAC tournament with a depleted roster yeah. with only eight guys, point. you're gonna need him playing well. So I think things are looking okay for Utah State in that conference turn for heading into the conference tournament. Yeah, it's it's deadlock uh, who they're gonna play. It'll be UT Arlington. UTA will be the fifth seed, Utah State. I'm sorry, U Utah State will be the fifth seed. UTA will be the fourth seed. And they'll play Thursday late, 9.30 on Thursday. Shaw, we are going to count it? Chance for a three-point play here for Jared Shaw. Now in double figures. Shaw just dancing around in the paint, twisting and twirling, and finally finds a way to the rim and gets the foul. Marcel Davis, a nice feed over the top. See Clifford count the bucket as Spencer Butterfield Checks out of the ball game, I uh, believe, for the final time. 14 points, three rebounds, five assists. I, I tell you, that's that's one of those things that's overlooked is his assist numbers. He had seven on Thursday to go along with those 20 rebounds. Inside of one minute to play. Hill for three. Missed it. Rolling rebound. Now see if they can get Gardner to walk on. Freshman, see if they can get him some points. I know Thursday night they were trying. Coach Morrill gave him the green light to shoot it. First time that he's been able to play at home. Saw his first action against Louisiana Tech. Winning team, losing team chance. We'll let you listen.
Utah State will improve to 21 and 9 overall. Not bad considering losing three starters. Here's Gardner with two. He lost it. Missed his three on Thursday, too. Would love to score in front of the home fans. Hill with the tip doesn't go. And Utah State going to dribble this one out. So they've won two in a row as we head to the WAC Conference Tournament. To get that 21 win mark, 20 plus wins, a big thing for Coach Morrow. And how about our GNC player of the game? Really good performances by a couple guys, but pretty clear Clifford. Far and away the best player here tonight for the Aggies. A career night for the sophomore. Seven of ten shooting. 21 points, eight rebounds. Well, credit him with three assists. So nice job for Ben Clifford, the sophomore. Been filling in because of all the injuries and is really starting to play very well here as we head down the stretch. Now scoring double figures five times this season. Big Ben, the sophomore from South Jordan. And Utah State with their 1500th victory. 52nd team to do that in the history of the NCAA. Let's go over to Brooks Hansen now. Thanks, Michael, here with Ben Clifford. Ben, our player of the game, a new career high. What was the ML coming into tonight? Uh, maybe just play confident and play hard. Try to do it every night. Uh, we're trying to get some momentum going into the WAC tournament. Uh, we knew who we were going to play, so the main thing this week was like really just try to get some momentum. And what do you look forward to in Arlington? A team that got you twice, and they got you good both times. Um, revenge. I mean, they beat us bad in Arlington, and, uh, you know, we want to get revenge. Last year, too, got knocked out the first round. That was really disappointing. So, I mean, we're just trying to go in and uh, do our best in the tournament. All right, thanks, Ben. Congratulations, your player of the game, see you in Vegas. Michael, back to you. All right, thank you, Ben and Brooks. So revenge is the key here moving forward next week against the Mavericks of UT Arlington. We'll wrap it up after this.